Sera from Myanmar. He has presented Yoga and Buddhism. Um, he has focused on uh, Buddhist uh, tenets of noble truths. First, he has talked about noble truths, four noble truths, which are the pillars, the foundational pillars of Buddhism. And then uh, self discipline, mindfulness, etc., etc. And Buddhism is a religion of mind rather than the spirit that he has pointed out. And later on, the most important point is Anatma Vada that he has told about Buddhism. And I should make a point here that Patanjali uh, Yoga Sutra has a root in Upanishads, which is much, much earlier than Buddhism. Even in Bhagavad Gita, you will find a lot of uh, teachings which Patanjali Yoga Sutra probably has taken from there and uh, yoga is an integral part of our Indian spiritual life. Thank you so much. Uh, next I have uh, requested Mr. Parnashavi from Myanmar uh, to present his paper. His paper titles Social Values as Expounded as a noble truth of Buddhism. Mr. Pendashami, please. Good morning. My name is Rabbanyar Sabi. I am PhD student in the Department of Body Study, University of Kolkata. So I wanted to introduce you. So I wanted to discuss about the social value as found in the fourth number two of policy. In the sutra, Buddhist rejected the four true have both symbolic and proposition and function. They represent the weekend and liberating of the Buddha, but also the possibility of liberation for all sentient beings. Describing how release from the craving is to be reached. The Pali Kano Sakrocha. The whole truth appearing and our teaching. As far as the entire, namely, Dhamma Matras. Which has to be taken together. They provide as conceptual framework for introduction and explaining for its thought, which has to be personally understood or experienced. The four novel shows. I went to the five asset assets for two extremes, and his newly discovered made a part. The Buddha explained them the four noble truths, which to are they his teaching. The four noble truths was not fully clear in these three asset in these three ways. Regarding the four noble truths, I did not come to have realized the perfect enlightenment that was supreme in the world, which it is God, which it is God, which it is Brahma, and which it is Brahma. In this world, where it is recluse and priest, where it is kings and men. Therefore, the kingdom of Parisian lies in the four noble truths. There follows the noble truth of suffering. Doga Ariyadesa. The noble true of cause of suffering. Doga Nirora Ariyadesa. The noble true of the bar leading to the cessation of sufferings. Doga Nirora Kamini Padipara Ariyadesa. <coughs> These truths are called Ariyadesani because the great Ariya, the Buddha who was far from fashion, discovered their in control variable first. The first noble truth. The first noble truth and dies Doka. 
which means difficult to be endured as a feeling. It is this admitted that Matam Doka in the first noble truth. Contain not only the ordinary meanings of sufferings, but also include deeper ideas such as imperfection, impermanence, and emptiness. Since there is no better English equipment to embrace the whole conception of the term Doka, and the first noble truth, scholars have to render it is a sufferance in which only mega the consumption of doka is due from three absolute follows. It transcends sufferings doka doka. Suffering in chain. You bring nama doka. Suffering due to formation. Sandara doka. Second truth. Craving dana is the second truth. On the cause of Suffering, Doka Samburia Raya Desa. It's produced, revert, Puna Bawaka, Puna Bawika. It's bounded with a fashionate clinging, Nandi Raga Tahakata, and finds fresh delight now here and now there. Craving is of three kinds. Thus, for sensual pleasure, Kama Tana. For existing, Boa Tana and non existent, we Boa Tana. According to the common trees, Boa Tana is interpreted as tough for sensual pleasure in relation to the belief of internalism, Satara Deity. And as therefore, reads of form, Ruba Raga. We Boa Tana deal with thus for sensual pleasure as regarded as the belief of nihilism Ochira Deti and that for reads formless re Rubaraga Rubaraga and Arubaraga are considered as two first time the thus noble truth is the the sensation of sufferings Doka Nirora Riyadesa it is popularly known as Nibbana. Etymologically, the Pali term Nibbana is made up of Ni and Wana. As a particular, Ni implies negation or Dibisha. Dibarsha. Wana means craving. This craving stands accord to connect one life with another. Nibbana, therefore, Library literally means departure need from life craving one night. The whole noble truth is there are the way leading to the cessation of sufferings. Doga Nirona Gamani Badi Bada Ariya Desa. This is known as the middle part because it's three clear of two extremes. One extreme is uh, intelligence and sensual pleasure. The retarded normal process, progress. The other is self-modification in different form or as a decision is weakened. The intelligence, it is the matter part alone, abiding on the two extreme. That can lead to nirvana. The end of woefulness, doka. The matter part is generally referred to the Nova a fopa area at ten giga mega because it is a format of age categories. They run as follow right understanding sama deity, right thought sama sengaba, right speech sama wasa, right action sama kamanda, right livelihood sama ajiwa, right effort sama waima. Right mindfulness, sama sati. Right concentration, sama samadhi. Right understanding is associated with the knowledge of the four noble truth and the understanding of then as they. Right thoughts include thought of self renunciation or detachment, 
naked with the God. Those of loving kindness and those of non violence or conversion. Right speech deal with abstaining from for who slandering, harsh words, and frivolous talk. Right action means abstaining from killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct. Right liberal connect, refraining from the five kinds of trait, which bring harm to others, such as trading in an and leather weapon. Human beings, flesh, i.e., breathing animal for slather, and those getting drunk and poison. Right effort denote their endeavor. One, to get rid of even that was already rising. Two, to prevent the rising of even that has not risen. Three, to produce good noia rising and four to promote the good that is already rising. Right mindfulness import to constant contemplating which is firmly established one on the physical phenomena or activities of body, such as on the exhaled and the inhaled breath. Two, on sensation of feeling. Three, on thought of mind process, such as thought associated with the fashion or dissociated from the fashion. And four, on a phenomena such as hindrance, right concentration, signifying the full state of Diana ecstasy. <coughs> The first dana is a five pesta. This is to say, apply thought, sustain thought, happiness, bliss, and concentration. The second has three pesta remaining after elimination of applying and sustain thought. The other has the two pesta with the final way of applying happiness. The four. Where blesses, awareness has a concentration and equanimity of accompanied. In conclusion, as a conclusion, all these of us mentioned are very important to know, to practice, and to be free from suffering, which encounter is our daily life. If we follow the verb ways, we can escape from the wrong of birth and death called sansara. Mainly, the judgment prevent us not to free from suffering and make us cry, suffer, attach, and set. Actually, our major enemy is a judgment which will travel every moment. We therefore have to remove this by the way so therefore noble truths. Besides, the noble truths refer to and embrace the base of concentration of Buddhism in a short impression. We create the claim to importance, state and dance, which are doka, incapable of satisfying and painful. <coughs> this craving keeps us Kosh in samsara. The endless cycle of repeated river and dying again. Nirvana, sensation of craving. Yavra, river and associated dukkha when no longer rising again. This can be accomplished by following the eightfold part. Restraining oneself. Cultivating discipline and practicing mindfulness and meditation. Thank you so much. The relevant topic. Uh, now society is facing a widespread uh, illusion of values. So we need the tremendous values. Dr. Panna Swami, Swami has talked on 
uh, social values as expounded in four noble truths. So everywhere this is a problem around across the globe. India is facing the problem, Japan is facing, America is facing the erosion of values. So if we practice these four noble truths, so values can, can be inculcated in our life and we can have a better life and we know the how much a problem we are facing in the society. The most uh, uh, degraded form of the problems we to call as corruption. So that can be eliminated and we can have a peaceful life. So he has talked on four noble truths in details and he focused on the cessation of sufferings which uh, is a true fact and everybody wants to get rid of the suffering dukkha nirodha he talked about it and then uh, four noble truths that is suffering exists that is number one number two it comes to us and number three there is a way out and number four the ways eightfold path so he has talked very beautifully here and then it will uh, stop the samsara the cycle of births and deaths this, this is how he has expounded uh, the social values uh, in noble truths thank you so much again panna swami uh, next i am uh, recording here is chikabhati he is also from myanmar and his subject is skillful means in mahajana buddhism is chikabhati please Karma, my name is Sekaori. I am from Myanmar. I am a PhD student, Department of Buddhist Theory, University of Kolkata. I would like to presentation about the escape mean in Mahayana Buddhism. Escape mean cannot be applied to all cases and to all. So. That the Buddha had created 84,000 methods of 84,000 means, and also 84,000 doors to go into the house of enlightenment. We meditate, recite the Buddha, chambe, follow the fourth noble truth, the cause of all things of the Mara, all means. So, other methods of cultivation in this world are merely means. The meritorious remedies that have such a being to destroy dark darkness, to see the light of truth, but the mirror is not the end, the mirror is the cause, the air is the result. The mirror is not true, but the air is true. The greatest ignoring of me is to take the me at the end. Therefore, the world is meant just better by the means to reach the end, to follow the finger to see the moon. Skipu me in the Sutrama for Medica Sutra. The Lutheran Sutra is especially important for Mahayana Buddhism and can be said to be one of the most popular Sutra. In the Lutheran Sutra, mention a number of important teachers such as one party care, Buddha, nature, and me. The Lutheran Sutra Ibrat Sari Harmony, wishing to bring all the sex and yana to soft. Savaka yana, Pitika Buddha, and Bodhisattva are just me to lead to the Buddha. And so they are in nothing contradictory, but temporary means on the part of writing. The story of the Lutheran Sutra K, the story of the house being banned. Why the soul of the empire keep on fleeing friends inside? The prince wanted to see the children from the plant and told them to go out and promise them. They are cold and bubble bajik. These different bajik are just the means to care. The children in the various fire hub are there. When they go out of the fire house, he gives them the same party gift, fit and beautiful. Skip me in the Vimalaki Lady Nidisha Sutra. 
Then we will like that in the Sutra mention some important doctrine. Suggest important. Impermanent duality, non duality. And means, as well as other best teaching, such as impermanent, <coughs> suffering, and non self. Then we will like that in the Sutra places a way of practicing for the same. Outside, the monastery life, and other world. The Mahayana Sutra present the way of practicing Dharma and Madhima with the barriers in any form and limit of precepts. Like the Lotus Sutra, the Vimala Kigadi Nisha Sutra devote a chapter to talk about the doctrine of me. However, it is also recognized that the means of the separate and present through heart. This Sutra. Me is a different way to combat being. The women are guilty is referred to as bodhisattva at home in the attainment of the human life. But he understands and practices the Dharma ultimately, and even to use countless me to teach Dharma for the benefit of such a being. His appearing as a layman and good deed such as Participation and life work are the means by which he can transmit the teaching of the Buddhas and benefit the living. The women like it ready, Nidesha, Sodara also see the means as a way to hear the practitioner gather up the attachment and clinging. Skipu me in the Upaya Kausala Sodara. In the Upaya Kausala Sodara, the meat can be divided into the fat. The light of Sata Muni is manifestation of scape meat. And scape meat are the specialties of the boy Sata. According to this, the light of the Buddha from entering the world and the Nirvana is a process of performing scape meat. The Upaya Kausala Sodara said, that the power of the Buddha into the place, marriage and later renunciation are omis. The me of Bodhisattva is the ultimate realization of the Paramita with the desire to attain enlightenment and cease sentient being. The Upaya Kausala Sotara that a Bodhisattva not giving a small piece of food to an enemy. This has to be the way to enlightenment and the blessing of the living being. And by Skebu Mi, when the Bodhisattva upon a land given one, they also upon the other Paramita. Method teaching of the Buddha. The Buddha did not immediately took the way after realization and wait until the request of the Samadhi Devi. Is considered as capable mean in the beginning of his teaching. Ariya, Ari is now so far for example. Being in the world light, the lotus in the lake, a lotus rose up of the water. But also the lotus has no crosses. The Shiva page. Being in the same world, there are people, less dusty light, more dusty light, there are intelligent. Of that city. Simply nature, even nature. Easy to teach class, debate class, and you see the ranger of big nation in the world. And the ranger of doing, wrong doing, because of the different session being. The teachers need to be taught in the different ways. Continue the Buddha teach the Yasa <coughs> his people first. He came to Uruwila and was ordained that the young man. Then the three Katapa Rada would they are one thousand disciples. This event occurred in the past year after the Buddha's enlightenment in the second year. He is transformed by instruction. The Sari Buddha Magalana, we are regarded as important point in his propagation. The silence of the Buddha. The Buddha was silent before. 
What are his questions such as the word is permanent or abominate, boundless or infinite, light and death or what about the other? The Tagada exists after death or does not exist after death. And in same case, the Buddha also refused the question of set or not set and sometimes request. And sometimes refuse the answer about the origin of karma. The mark is me. In the Alaka Dupama Sutra, the Buddha taught that the disciple should apply the Dharma to light in a clever and correct way. The mark is only a me using that means for the purpose of creating suffering. Then, the person is considered having wisdom. In the asset of Buddhism, the story of the Buddha Bridisa emphasizes one thing is that in order to attain Buddha, one must go through any Bodhisattva Friday with a parameter. It is not restricted to monastery or in some form. Bodhisattva in the story Bridisa appear in different forms. But whatever part in condition, the Bodhisattva always show that there is wisdom. Always arise conviction. And as in what many people miss for the benefit of others. On the other we let such people miss in the Mahayana Kingdom. And says from the beginning, the term scapegoat me is primarily used in Mahayana Buddhism. Thank you so much. Mr. Shopun Sarkar, our executive operation. Now I will request them to uh, hand over them the our logo of the seminar. I will request our chairperson, Swamiji Nittanagarandaji, uh, to uh, be there for some photo session, please. Knowledge.
May I request Professor H. K. Mishra to be to be here for the photo session, please. Uh, Mr. Shafak, please you stay there. Kanyan Bajal, you stay there. And I am also requesting the other foreign delegates who have come over, please come to the photo session, please. I am requesting also the foreign delegates to come over here for the photo session. Please. We are running short of time. We are already late by one hour. So, so please. We should have a big clap for them all. So we are on the second part. We will now uh, start our uh, plenary session of the of the day, and we are uh, here with us is uh, Shami Nitto Jogananda Ji, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Ovijit Ghosh, uh, Professor H K Mishra. So I am requesting them to come over here, uh, so that we can start our session. Sir, Dr. Ovijit Ghosh, please, Professor H K Mishra, please. As part of the schedule, uh, Professor Dr. Ashok Kumar Mahata, HOD Sanskrit Department, has to chair the session. But due to some problem uh, last night, he has uh, given me the call that uh, he will not be able to attend the session. So I am requesting from our organization and from the house also, so Swami Nitya Jagannandaji, to chair the session and to speak for this session. And, and I request uh, uh, Professor Misra and uh, Abhijit Misra, and I think Dr. Abhijit uh, Ghosh has to uh, some other program, so he has uh, running short, so he has requested me. So I think this session will start with Dr. Abhijit Ghosh. Any uh, kind permission of the chairperson? Yes. Uh, so we will just uh, start the session. Shapan. We hope that we have enjoyed the first session uh, with the different aspect of different Asian schools have given their views regarding this. And Dr. Professor H. K. Mishra has given us the immense support for this part of this program. And we are very much thankful to him. And now we are going for the second session. Uh, and this session will start. Uh, before that, I am requesting our staff, sub, uh, support staff to come over here for the felicitation program. Selecting <laughs> our felicitation. So, I request first... Uh, So first, I am requesting him to uh, felicitate Maharaj Shaminita Jogarandaji. He is from Belur Mat. 
is the Acharya in the Bailey Mart Professionals. Professor Dr. H. K. Musa is from Golput Shanti Niketan in Vishwabharati University from Department of Sanskrit. <clears throat> Professor Dr. Ovijit Ghosh is the director of the S. Bhasha Center, Kolkata. And with the kind permission of the chairperson, Maharaj Ji, uh, uh, may I request uh, Dr. Ravijit Ghosh to come over. Yes. So I am requesting Dr. Ravijit Ghosh uh, to be to here, and his subject is Integrated Approach of Yoga Therapy. <laughs> and very good morning to all of you. My respected dignitaries on the dais and off the dais, my beloved friends. <coughs> Thanks to Ritambhara Pragya, they have given tremendous effort to organize this event, this seminar, workshop in Jadavpur University. And I know how much effort they have given, especially Ashimda working very hard behind this. And we could <coughs> see the glimpse and the thoughts related to yoga from different mindset. As I am going to talk on integrated approach of yoga therapy, <coughs> it's a little bit different from yesterday's sessions till now but I am very much excited that this seminar and workshop the taste is a little different than others I was discussing really it is blended with different taste usually our seminars on yoga too much technical, too much related to our physical body. That's why somehow we forget the real nature of yoga in our conferences. But this is really unique. Before I go to my topic, it is therapy. One of my beloved monk from Calcutta University he was talking about Theravada Buddhism, the four noble truth and that eightfold path of practices. I think somebody need to do some research how the word therapy came into existence. Somehow I feel the therapy word very much came from the word Theravada. So somehow it is diverted. It is the English word therapy. But Theravada has some link with this because the yoga we practice today, how Buddha became Buddha, that we need to understand. He was Siddhartha, a small boy. He never knew and no experience about the society and suffering because his father knew that that he is going to renounce everything and not going to be at home. So his father did not allow him to go outside the palace. So he was not knowing all the sufferings and the problems of the society. When first time he went to the society and came back with the mindset of depression that how people are suffering. So it is the suffering, Siddhartha became Buddha because of the suffering. So that means somehow the suffering, pain, dukkha may lead us to moksha, may lead us to nirvana. That's what 
Buddha established in his lifetime. So this therapy is not merely therapy. As modern medicine, we see, they give therapy. But the purpose is therapy to cure the disease only. So their focus is disease. But yoga therapy is something different than this therapy, this modern therapy. So our focus is not to treat the disease, the slide will come later, but to treat the whole personality. So that is the aim of yoga therapy and silently this therapy will help us to lead nirvana or moksha, what is aim for all these yoga systems. So that's what, don't take it otherwise, the disease or problem or suffering is for the sake of suffering, is not. The suffering also may be a tool for realization. That's what we use yoga therapy. <clears throat> so from yesterday, we were listening various lectures about yoga. But thank God that mostly all lectures are related to very high level of conversation. Not into asana only or asana pranayama only. Usually yoga seminar conference means that asana and pranayama, asana and pranayama, nothing else. But here we saw something else. So that's what already we understood. The yoga, what is that? Is not physical exercise, but outside world, they know about yoga only in the form of physical exercise and breathing jagging. It's not a yoga pose, not the magic, not the breathing channels. So that we understood from yesterday. So it is very good that we are much ahead in this seminar. <clears throat> so yoga is the science of holistic living. If we want to get rid of the sufferings, the pain or diseases, we need to think about these things. So yoga is not only that, yoga is something else. So how to live in this world? And how yoga will help to get all these things, peace and poise, health and happiness, knowledge and efficiency, self-control and service jill. Yoga talks, talks about that. In the concept of yoga, we see there are many texts they defined yoga so nicely. The skill to come down the mind is yoga. Vashishta said, Mana Prasavana Upaya Yoga. So how to come down the mind? That techniques is all about yoga. And if you go a little higher, they will talk about more things about yoga to unite the individual soul with the supreme soul. These are big, big talks. Yesterday we heard about Atman, self-realization. These are very hard to realize the things. These are very hard to understand. Although this concept we cannot understand. From yesterday, series of talks went one after one, but how many of how many of us understood the real soul? We cannot, because this is not the matter of understanding. We cannot understand that Jivatma or the Paramatman, it is the matter of experiential knowledge. We need to experience that. So talking and giving lecture one after one is very easy. But to understand this, it is very difficult. So I am not going into that. So I will be talking about the basic fundamental knowledge of yoga. And yoga means the word itself, it defines everything. Yog, the word, it, it did not come from the word of philosophy. It, the word came from the mathematical sci uh, word. It means the addition. Yog is, in our childhood we learned from primary schools, Yog means addition. <clears throat> so how it added things that we need to think, that we need to see. Yoga is the systematic conscious process for developing health. So in the process, we can develop our health also. Our previous speakers, they spoke so nicely. Because all the things in the society, in our daily life, we are suffering. If we cannot get rid of these sufferings, then where is self-realization? We cannot realize, realize anything. So it is very difficult to realize or, or talk about many big, big things. 
if I am not alright. So I need to take care of my health and health is given most important in Buddhism also. That's what in total Theravada Buddhism I think their complete focus into how to correct myself, how to correct my living, how to correct, that's what all rightful path they have explained so nicely. So yoga for health we need to think in the beginning. Then slowly we can go ahead with other theories. So if we think about health, what is the health? <clears throat> is the absence of disease? Any strong man, strong muscle? And no disease? Is he a healthy person? No. Even WHO also given the definition of health is a state of well-being at physical, mental, social and spiritual level and not merely an absence of, uh, absence of illness or infirmity. In today's concept, we think that if we are physically fit, then I am healthy. No. So you have to be, you have to be healthy, mentally also, socially also, and you should have some spiritual idea and spiritual path to follow. Then only you are healthy. That's what the concept is very clearly defined by WHO also. <clears throat> Not the disease. I was telling about this. Whole man has to be treated. Whole man means not the physical body only. So whole man has to be treated. And in this way, what we see? Prevention is better than cure. When, when we suffer from various ailments, we go to doctor, we go to hospitals. But we need to think that, why to go to hospital? Why to go to doctors? Why disease is coming? We need to think about that. If we can think on this, then we can prevent many, many diseases, many, many discomforts and many sufferings. So doctors have limited time. Our priority should change. If you go to a doctor, they don't have time to check you up. And today, first if, if you are suffering, if you have something, problem, go to hospital, immediately doctor will prescribe you to go for several tests. And all tests are so expensive. So you have to sell down everything. What do you have if you have some chronic problem? So that is the medical system. It is completely a business hub today. So we need to think and we need to change our priority. So not to go to hospital, not to go to doctors. Because we have many preventive theories. So let us implement that. If we can do that, then we will be in the path of enlightenment as previous spokesperson, they are, all of them have spoken the same thing. So in yoga therapy, we think the disease, the suffering, we have two types. One is stress bond, another one is non-stress bond. Non-stress bond we know, the infection, injuries, toxins, etc. Infection, all these viral kind of infection we know, which has very least control but today's modern medicine, they have done extensive research on this and somehow we controlled many infectious diseases today. In previous days, even in cholera people used to die like anything. But today, many prevention theories they have developed. They have developed many surgical tools, more than 5000 surgical tools they have developed to tackle this human body. So that's what the achievement they have made. Many injuries we can immediately fix up. Even organ tra transplantation today can do. We can change our organs. So these are the achievements they have done. But the big failure, big challenges, I would say, I would say challenges. Big challenges are to tackle the psychological problems. The modern medicine, modern scientists, they are, they are in trouble with this. So all stress bond diseases means all psychosomatic diseases. Psychosomatic diseases means diseases comes from the psyche, comes from the mind. So that's what in our Shastra we say these are Adhija Vadhis. Vadhi means disease. Adhi means mind. The disease comes from the mind is called Adhija Vadhi, stress bond disease. 
to understand this disease we need to understand our existence how disease forms and how this disease comes to our body <clears throat> so this concept the basis of yoga therapy we practiced and we saw in taitri upanishad they explain about our ex existence it is the panchakosha tattva in panchakosha theory we see we have five layers of existence not this physical body only this physical body with this bone muscles and organs cannot move what do we need to move to move everything in this world we need the energy force behind it in yogic text we say the prana the vital energy force if it is there inside then only we can move we can talk we can do something if this prana is not there if this prana is absent then we cannot do anything we will, we will be like a dead body dead body everything is there all the organs are there maybe all all the organs are fit capable brains are okay neurons are okay but the body is not moving why we said the prana is gone that's what the body cannot do anything so that's what the vital energy body is also important body and not only that our seers our yogis they have seen this prana this they have seen this existence of prana and how it works same like physical body our modern scientists they have given lot of in depth things in physical body similarly our yogis they have given the detailed idea of this pranic body it has several channels like electromagnetic field with us so it is there working it has given the seven chakras and there are many sub chakras it is working and because of that we are moving we are talking we are do doing everything we have physical body we have energy body the prana but still something is making missing if that is not there then we are not the human being what is that that is called manomaya kosha the mind if the mind is not there if i have everything then also i am not able to be, uh, be a man a human we know one of our great politician priyaranjan dashmunshi have you heard about him he was living in coma so long years i think 2 3 years he was in coma his physical body was all right his prana was all right but he was no more he was like a vegetable lying on the bed since 3 years so since 3 years he was there or not there it was same why because his mind his intellect was not working so that's why if mind is not there then we cannot do anything because this is the thoughts if these thoughts are not working then we are no more so but thoughts are there this mind is we are explaining this mind is nothing but this emotional mind this thoughts connects our emotions our senses those thoughts we are talking about but there are another thoughts level that is called intellect and the intellect we say vignanamay kosha and this intellect is little different from this general mind this emotional mind how this intellect works continuously our intellect will be working like analyzing the thing always it will analyze with good and bad with this and that so continuously this intellectual thoughts will be analyzing th things so that's what and this intellect we need to develop from the childhood we don't get this intellect we get the mind because it is connected with our sensory organs but we don't develop the intellect we need to inculcate we need to develop slowly through how through learning through the process of learning we develop our intellect we learn the things and store in a place called memory and if our memory is very strong to memorize everything then my intellect is more powerful than others so that's what in yoga through yoga also we can develop this memory and we can make it more and more powerful the process is given in yoga so that's what and the problem is lying here with this general mind with this emotional mind 
and the intellect. And the problem creates here the entire therapeutic aspect, what we explain, what we think today, is starts from here. It is the conflict between this mind and this intellect we create all the problems. We have another body called Anandamai Kosha. Anandamai Kosha is the existence of bliss. So we are all this, we, are, we have all this blissful existence. So we are with, with bliss, we are with Ananda always. But at the same time, we are away from Ananda, we are away from bliss, happiness. Because we don't try to recognize our inner existence. <laughs> That's what always we deal with this mind and intellect, mind and intellect and physical body, so that we are gone away from this or uh, ananda or happiness. <clears throat> so this five layer of existence, what we are talking about, and the problem starts, the suffering starts from this mind and intellect, and that suffering is called stress. Because of stress, we suffer. And stress, in yogic definition, stress is called speed. Vega. In our Shastra it is said, Vega. Vega means speed. Where is the speed? Speed in the mind. Speed in the thought level. If our thought is speeded up, then the problem starts. And how these thoughts are, how these stressful thoughts are generated? One beautiful sloka everywhere I try to explain because we need to understand that it's from Bhagavad Gita. We think that Bhagavad Gita is like a uh, religious spiritual text. It's not. Yesterday also it was spoken that Bhagavad Gita is not formed in the AC room. It was given in the war field. So the necessity of Bhagavad Gita is different somewhere. So we need to understand that. So that's what there Lord Krishna categorically mentioned how we develop this stress and how we destroy ourselves. It is given like Dhyayata Vishayan Punsaha Sangastesu Upajayate. Somebody was telling about attachment. Sangastesu Upajayate. Sangat Sanjayate Kamaha. Kamat Krodha Vijayate. Krodha Bhavati Sammoha Sammoha Smriti Vibhramaha Smriti Bhramcha Buddhi Nasa Buddhi Nasa Pranashati. Like this. The sloka goes. So we need to understand how we develop stress. Dhyayata Vishayan Punsaha, one single subject we think repeatedly and whatever subject we take in my mind, in our mind and think it repeatedly, we develop attachment towards that subject, whatever it may be. Maybe it is my dream uh, flat I want to buy, I want to buy a car. I want to buy a beautiful house, whatever it is, or I want to marry someone. So whatever it is, the subject is thought, and that thought, repeatedly, if I am thinking, slowly I will indulge with that thought, and I want, I will try to live continuously with that same thought, and 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 suddenly we develop the attachment. Sangat sanjayate kama. From there, but then still. If I think about the same thought continuously every day and night, then slowly I will develop kama. Kama means all the desires will come on that thought, on that single thought. Now the thoughts are generated again and again. Many other thoughts will be developed on that, on that basis. So there are many thoughts will generate. Like I want to buy a beautiful, thought, beautiful flat in Newtown. So one single thought, now I am thinking repeatedly. If I think repeatedly, slowly I develop attachment with the thought. Then what happens? When I develop attachment, what I want at that time? I want that. I want to get it. Whenever I think something repeatedly and I get attachment with that, immediately I want to have it. That is our tendency. When you want to have it, so we want to run for it and we want to work for it. So I go to real estate, I go to the bank for loan, I want to go many people for the designers, all the, all the things and we run behind to achieve it. <clears throat> then what happens? Then desires comes. It will be so nice, it will be so beautiful. Ah, this will be living room, this will be the playroom, this will be the puja room 
hey, that is my parking area and when parking area comes i need to buy one mercedes car then again new thought is generated how the mercedes car will come so entire the basis of thoughts is generated on one single thought <clears throat> then what happens see the beautiful twist lord krishna has given kamat krodha vijayate what means the slowly from the desire we develop krodha those who got the flat those who could achieve their dream for them it is not the problem maybe problem will come later but now those who are failed to achieve the problem comes for, for them so i suddenly what happened the bank manager told me that your loan is cancelled so immediately what happens i generate krodha krodha bhavati samoha now from krodha anger when you get anger what happens when you get anger what happens at that time see the continuous demanding situation i i develop that i will get it i will get it i will get it continuously and i was so excited that when i will have a new flat i will go there i'll do this and do that so many things continuous desire and from that suddenly there is a break and i could not achieve it i failed to achieve and suddenly the reaction the reaction in me that we need to see <clears throat> and from there problem starts when you get angry what is the reaction we show in our physical body immediately what happens immediately you will see your physical body like your all the muscles will be tighten like anything and i will kill you beat you all the words will come out from your mouth then what happens when your body is tightened your eyes are open wild then suddenly you see your breath is going high <laughs> you will breathe like this if your breathing is going high then what is the next response to your heart your heart will beat like anything you can listen the sound of your heart it will beat like anything so if your heart is beating so fast what will happen to the physical body can you imagine at that time because heart is supplying the blood throughout the body from your brain to the <coughs> to the thumb so entire body inside is flow like a tsunami came inside and when tsunami comes in the body can you imagine what happens the flow from the ocean is hitting the land what happened at that time at the time of tsunami do you know that same thing happens inside the body and when this tsunami comes in the body all organs were working so harmoniously so nicely so rhythmically our pancreas our heart our lung so nicely it was working and suddenly tsunami came inside the blood flow is rushing like anything then what happens to pancreas suddenly pancreas will say, oh my god what happens to this body so much blood flow is coming what i have to do so i am a responsible citizen of this body so i must help to this body so tremendous secretion of insulin started from pancreas it's a problem maybe pancreas will think no 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 something happened to this body so much blood flow is coming i must watch and sit sit and watch see pancreas is stopped not secreting insulin what will happen the problem is diabetes so whatever the response is inside the physical body in any organ i have given the example of pan pancreas but it, it may be anything it may be lung it may be your eye it may be your intestine it may be your duodenum whatever it is so if the reaction in the physiology is like this then problem starts then disease starts it's organ failure <clears throat> so from there we develop disease so that's what all disease is called psychosomatic ailments because it started in the mind and it is reflecting in the physical body so in stressful situation we have two choices one is to fight another one is to fly fight means fight the stress and calm down the stress and another one is oh i cannot face this situation so fly from here so this two way we want to escape from the situation but better is to fight in the situation otherwise 
if we don't learn how to tackle the situation then any of this organ will be failed and slowly the entire physical body will be affected by this problem so that's what all of us we know how to create stress from our childhood we know how to create stress how to develop stress within us but from our childhood we never studies we never studied how to release stress how to get rid of stress we never learned that's what all of us we are the abhimanyu of mahabharata you know what happened to abhimanyu in mahabharata he knew how to enter into chakrabuha but he was not knowing how to come out from chakrabuha so that's what he was killed inside chakrabuha so all of us we know how to get into stress how to create stress for me and for others and pointing out the problem comes from him husband will blame the wife all the problem started from him from her and i cannot live in this family is horrible my wife is horrible <laughs> so same thing the wife will say my husband is the main problem in my family he never try to understand us so always even the boss will tell the subordinates they are the worthless people they are good for nothing and i have to do all the thing and same the subordinates they will say the same same thing the boss is the problem in this company we need to throw this boss so this is our habit we don't know where this problem is we try to blame each other if any problem any stressful situation immediately we focus our finger to others so i am a clean man all problem comes from outside problem is exist everywhere wherever we are problem is there but we need to know we need to practice we need to understand the problem we need to understand the physiology of stress how stress develop whatever it is if i don't take stress then how stress will develop in me is there any way there is a problem people are throwing stress towards me creating problems for me if i don't take the problems then how problem will come to me there is no way it will come to me and it will it will stimulate me there is no way that's what before blaming others need to think about this and try to dissolve the problem within us that's what in the very beginning what the shloka i told in the very beginning we need to take care of the problem we need to understand the problem that this is going to create the stress i can i handle it or not or how can i channelize the stress then only we can live in this world happily happily and there are many other formula in yoga by practice we can deal with stress in the stage 1 what we see when you get stress <clears throat> the stress comes to the mind in our manumay kosha and manumay manumay kosha is affected the mind is affected when mind is affected we see all the problems problems of mind first we don't get sleep at night if you are under stress you won't get sleep you will be restless so that means the mind is affected already the disease already started in the mind it's a alarm and we know it so we have all sorts of problem restlessness irritability indecisiveness emotional outbursts anxiety anger depression all things it happens in the mind and in our day to day life we know it but do we do anything for this we have any way out for this we have any remedies for these problems we don't consider actually today that these are the problems because our modern medicinal system has no way out for this no department is given to treat manumay kosha to take care of the mind in today the department of psychiatry is developed but it is very new and they do, they don't have any medicine they don't have any idea how to treat this mind this is a great lacking so slowly modern medicinal scientist also slowly accepting this yogic science and they are taking it as the tool of medication 
and how to implement this, they are also taking uh, great research in their field. But still, they have nothing till now. That's why, if this problem starts in the mind, we need to think that this is the psychological alarm, alarm for us to take care of ourselves. If we don't take care, it will percolate into the second level. From mind, it will percolate into our pranomai kosha, the pranic body, the energy body. <coughs> what will happen to the energy body? <coughs> we know long ago we developed stress. From our school days, we started taking this stress. But we had no solution. We are thinking, but no solution. And we are carrying this problem. Anxiety, depression, irritability, all this we have. And we show it. In situation wise also, we cannot control ourselves. We express our emotion wildly. So that's what we need to think and treat this. If we don't treat this, it will percolate into pranamaya kosha. In pranamaya kosha, what are the diseases? In modern medicine, you, you won't get any name for these diseases. Okay? But we can see, we can feel these diseases. We will see the haphazard breathing, tired, fatigue. <coughs> if, if you walk little, after a little walking, you will feel tired. After walking one hour, two hour, you feel tired, you feel drowsy. After sleeping whole night also, you are not rested properly. You feel like that, if you are under stress. So that's why all these problems, then also we don't have any remedy. If I am tired, my breathing is haphazard, breathing is not proper, and energy is down, I can't work for five hours together. This is a big challenge, big problem. But we don't have any medicine for this. So that's why this is another alarm to take care of ourselves. If we don't take care, then slowly it will percolate into physical body in the form of organ failure, in the form of diseases. The diseases in <clears throat> muscular level, diseases in the stomach, it will reach till ulcer, asthma, high BP, IBS, diabetes, till cancer. All the diseases, somewhere the root is hidden in the mind, in our psyche. That's what it is called all psychological problem. Think about high BP. High BP is what? Hypertension. Tension means it is related to mind directly. <clears throat> Obesity. Mostly it is our habit, our lifestyle problem. We eat more but spend nothing. So that is the problem. So it is a lifestyle disorder. It is a mental disorder. And it started long back. But the practice, we continue. We try to continue the stress to happen in my mind. So all psychiatric problems started long ago. When it came to the physical body, somewhere it is paining, then we go to doctor. But it started long back, maybe. To start one single disease, it takes 10 to 20 years. And we know that I am under disease. I am under discomfort. But we don't have any remedies. In our education system, we don't have anything to understand myself. In our entire education system, we never found what is mind. What is about our thoughts? What is our emotion? We have never studied. All we study about external things. And our mind became external. <clears throat> whatever comfort, whatever happiness we want to get, we want to get from outside. That became our tendency. And we all know that happiness is not outside. Happiness is within. If I give you rasgulla, the first bite of rasgulla you will feel so happy. But if you give, if I give you more and more rasgulla, can you think the tenth number of rasgulla? How it will taste? Will you feel the same happiness what it was in the beginning? No. That means happiness was not there in Rasgulla. So happiness was within. So that's what we need to search within. 
the entire buddhistic philosophy is going because of this to search in search of within go within so that's what i will not take much time now we'll talk about yoga therapy how to treat this body how to treat this problem how to get rid of this suffering tanha or dukha how to go away from this so for this in yoga therapy all of you know vivekananda yoga anusandhan samsthana is at the university of bangalore we have developed so many techniques to get rid of this stress and this stressful discomfort the situation and be healthy at the same time to reach to enlightenment so these are the ways to take care as i explain the basis of yoga therapy is panchakosha the basis of yoga therapy is to take care of this five layer of existence not only this physical body the whole man has to be treated that's what in the physical body we need to give the prescribed asanas asanas not all asanas for all people so who has to do what asanas that we need to learn what postural correction to be needed so that need to think and we have very categorically scientifically researched all the things what disease we need to focus on what asanas and kriyas to cleanse this system we have shat karmas <clears throat> all these six cleansing techniques will clean the internal body cleaning is very important if cleaning is done properly your mind will be happy peaceful you saw every day we take bath after having bath what is our feeling <coughs> calm and quiet only by having bath that is also external we feel so calm and quiet can you imagine now if we clean the internal organs completely from our, from from our eyes to the anus internally if we clean completely how will be the feeling so your mind will be no more so that's what kriyas <coughs> the cleansing theory cleansing techniques that's what in hatha yoga it is prescribed first you need to learn cleansing therapy shat karmas they are emphasizing on it so if you do that then only i am eligible to practice asanas then only i am eligible to practice meditation dhyana otherwise the mind will be distracted like our <coughs> sukota gachi is her name she explained the bull okay i consider that bull is nothing but our that wild bull is compared with our mind okay to, to control that bull <coughs> and sit on that bull <coughs> if we can do that that agitated mind the wild bull my mind if we can control that and we can sit on that mind then that mind can do miracle it can change the whole life it can change the entire personality and that mind will help you to reach the destination of moksha so that's what yoga talks about that's what this asanas kriyas and proper diet what food to be taken we need to understand as a yoga student we need to focus into that <clears throat> so these asanas are not merely asanas there are several forms of asanas like gymnastics we no need to follow those asanas our focus is to calm down the mind in the beginning we said patanjali said yoga chitta vritti nirodha if we want to nirodha vrittis the thoughts we need to control then we need to focus into that that kind of asana we need to perform that's what in our yogic text there are no explain explanation about several asanas they are talking about how to come down this physical body how to how to bind this body and fix the body if our body is fixed then mind will be fixed automatically no need to give any effort to control the mind just bind the body tight the body and make it comfortable in sukhasana in padmasana whatever asana we take and clean the entire system <coughs> for pranamaya kosha yeah shall we conclude for the mind for the pranic body we have several techniques like pranic in basically we do pranayama through pranayama only entire pranic body you can clean the we can balance the prana and 
Pranayam also practicing is very orthodox, orthodox practices are there that we cannot practice many times. But there are several easy techniques that we can follow like pranic energization technique, mind sound resonance techniques. There are several techniques we develop in Isvesa <coughs> to correct the pranayam. <coughs> Then for the mind, we have dharana, dhyana, samadhi. To practice dharana, concentration, gazing and dhyana, meditation will come slowly, automatically. No need to give a lot of effort for meditation. Meditation on the way it will come. It will happen. No need to focus into that. But we need to learn how to focus, how to concentrate. That is a big pro problem. Emotion. Our emotions are so much diversified. We need to culture that emotion and we need to turn that emotions, negative emotions into positivity from Asura to Daiva, then only we can achieve all these things. For Vignana Maikosha, for the intellectual body, we have several practices like yogic counseling, notional correction, means why the problem has come, what is the problem. Intellectually, we need to think and analyze the thing. Then we have happiness analysis. All these topics, one one topic can take hours and hours lectures if we talk about this. Happiness analysis is a complete different subject, Ananda Mimamsa. So beautiful techniques are there, yogic counseling. We use the Karma Yoga theory in Bhagavad Gita to counsel the people. This is also one big area. And for Ananda Maikosa, the Ananda Maikosa, the blissful existence, we need to perform Karma Yoga, the Seva, service activity, happy assembly, all together, get together and do something which will make you happy. So those kind of practices are there. There are several many other practices we can correct our entire system. So that's what in integrated approach of yoga therapy, we don't consider this physical body is the single entity. Our entity is in these five layers. With these five external internal bodies, we have from our physical body till, till the Anandamaya Kosha. And for various psychosomatic ailments, we need to reduce speed or stress from all these five layers of existence, not only from physical body. If we clean this physical body only, the problem will come again, just like cleaning your rooms. So that's what, if we really want to clean, we need to clean our physical body, pranic body, mental body, intellectual body, and at the end, the blissful body. So there are several research taken out in our university. There we saw the Simple practices of yoga and relaxation technique can give so much relaxation we cannot imagine. Uh, even six hours of sleep, that gives only 9% of relaxation. There we found 24% relaxation we got from one practice we have made, self-management of excessive tension. It is combined of asanas and relaxation techniques. It's a 35 minutes practice. It gives 24 hours, one of the part of this research. So I can tell this better. So no need to sleep. In Japan, people want to work hard. They don't have time for sleep. So for them, if they practice this mate for 35 minutes, no need to sleep. They can work whole day. So that's what. Why we sleep? We need to relax ourselves. That is the purpose of sleep. So that's what. In yoga, we develop this kind of technique. There are many other research programs we have gone through. There we saw the reduction of medical management and the symptom scores, there we found lot of reduction in 15 days. One of my own research in hypertension, there in two weeks of practice, we saw these are the, the, uh, the baseline of BP. It's come down within two weeks. We cannot imagine this. And the higher the baseline is, the reduction is more. That is the importance of yoga and relaxation technique and meditation we found in that. This is one of the paper published in 1984, the first paper we can see. British Medical Journal, they have published on asthma. The paper they were not trying to publish, they were saying, what is this yoga? How come this through yoga only we can reduce asthma? But they have proven it and at the last they have published this paper. After that, slowly and gradually, the flow of research paper in the field of yoga came out like, like anything. So need more research. More yoga research. I am thankful to uh, Ritambara Pragna, Asimda and team that they, are, they have taken this initiative to, uh, to initiate this culture in West Bengal. Especially in West Bengal, the yogic tradition is completely different. But 
people like them and there are many more people they are trying very hard to establish this yogic concept in the in the form of yogic science and research and i think in near future we can see a different bengal in yoga and all the experts those who came here need their lead in this field to promote and practice yoga in a scientific way and whatever the scientific community understand on their language we need to put this yoga and in uh, bengal there are there are various practitioners which is very rare in india and world the bengali yoga teachers are very profound and very demanding in the world for your knowledge i can say for 11 years i was in south korea so i understand in the in the other countries how yoga is uh, getting popularity gaining popularity and there especially bengali yoga teachers those who are in bengal they have a prime role to play because their techniques their behavior their attitude towards yoga is different than others so i think in near future we can see a, a galaxy of yoga teachers from bengal will come out and shine the world for world peace thank you very much thank you very much for listening to me thank you so much to dr abhijit ghosh to enlighten us in the yoga field but we face another uh, thing that i am very sorry to say that swami ji nitya yoga nanda ji has a session at 11 uh, am in the morning and with our request he has shared the session of the paper presentation also but he has another classes in belur professional uh, institute there so he has to leave so i request just maharaj to just tell one or two words and then i will make all the arrangements for maharaj to leave because he has to reach belur by 2:30 today i reach japan myanmar vietnam etc <coughs> and of course last paper also was very nice detailed way of speaking so uh, right now actually i need to leave uh, to belur but i am extremely sorry that i am not able to pre- present any paper here uh, 230 i have to reach belur but so little bit of about yoga i need to tell uh, about patanjali yoga the goal of yoga is to attain freedom freedom from everything so that is what it is in the brief and in second sutra of patanjali yoga yoga chitta vritti nirodha entire some and substance is given there that is mind is to be controlled and all the vrittis through viveka khyati one particular term is viveka khyati khyati means it is a knowledge and knowledge of wrong things prakriti and purusha so we are identified ourselves with the prakriti it is jada which is insentient which has no consciousness mind is absolutely unconscious according to vedanta according to patanjali according to sankhya but uh, according to western uh, psychologist uh, like sharko then uh, freud and then carl jung mind is not totally unconscious so we accept mind is a matter it is unconscious the light of consciousness falls on the mind and mind gets animated as though so it is the instrument local uh, inst- internal local instrument called sukshma shariram in uh, vedanta in yoga that makes this body animated otherwise this body is dead and dull matter as the previous speaker uh, dr abhijit ghosh has explained so uh, this is the differentiated drik and drishyam it is called drishyam the matter is drishyam the atman the real consciousness principle purusha is drik the viveka khyati is the viveka discrimination between the drik and the drishyam and this viveka khyati will lead us to chitta vritti nirodha total cessation of the vrittis so this is one way and it it is achieved through ashtanga yoga we know the ashtanga yoga yama niyama asana pranayama then pratyahara dharana dhyana samadhi is eight fold paths if we practice different angas it will lead to viveka khyati that is the goal and we will achieve the total freedom from prakriti we are our nature is purusha we wrongly identify ourselves with prakriti we think that we act as prakriti but purusha is a pure consciousness principle the atman so the differentiation is required it can be achieved through ashtanga yoga another is called kriya yoga tapa swadhyaya ishvara panidhana ani kriya yoga tapa swadhyaya ishvara panidhana this forms a part of niyama niyama has a five uh, components 
One is the Saucha, then Santosha, Tapaha, Swadhyaya, Ishpar Panithana. So these are the Niyama. So Kriya Yoga also leads to kind of Tanu Karanam. Tanu Karanam means Klesha. There are Pancha Klesha. I would like to discuss little. If opportunity comes later, we will see it to it. So the Klesha will be Tanu Karanam, that is attenuated or weakened to a great extent. And then by the Pratiprasava, one particular term, counter evolution, you have to march back towards consciousness. So through that process also, we can reach this blessedness by uh, controlling the mind and through that control, Chitta Vritti Nirodha, totally cessation of the Chitta Vritti, which is the root cause of all of our problems. So today I am telling you this much. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me here. I am Mara Prajna and other institute. I, uh, I convey my thanks to them and I end with this. Thank you so much.